Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today will be part two of the three part series I'm currently going through, which is um, how I clean my comics. Now, part one was um, the basics, um, just dry cleaning with the, the cotton pads and the eraser. If you haven't seen that part one, um, feel free to check my channel for that and, and catch up on the, on the series. So today this is um more advanced methods. So we'll be helping get rid of some more of the dirt that's embedded in the fabrics of the paper. Um and also trying to clean up the, the back of the book, which was a lot worse than the front. So before I continue, um I'd really like and I'd appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if it's if it's helpful whatsoever. Thank you. So we'll start off with how we did last time. So I always like to have a magazine size backer board on the bottom of the desk, just underneath the the book to help keep it clean. Um, I'll then take a standard size backing board and I'll just like to put that in the center of the book where the staples are. It just helps to keep the book rigid and make sure we don't cause damage to the spine. I will then place a magazine backing board, shiny side up, beneath the cover that I'm, I'm going to work on. That's the two things. So the first reason is for to keep the form of the cover. And the second reason is to make sure that nothing that we put on the cover is going to go onto the pages beneath. So all that we'll be using today for this first part is just cotton rounds again and just deionized water, just standard deionized water that I've put in one of these spray bottles. It's just easier for application. Now all I'm going to do is lightly mist the cotton round. I'm going to do this off camera because I don't want to get anything on the area. So. a couple of light sprays onto the cotton pad and all that I'm going to do is work from the spine of the book outwards not applying a lot of pressure because once the paper gets wet or damp it, it does become weaker as you can imagine No, I'm not put, no, I, I've not put a lot of water on this. It's, it's just I've lightly misted the cotton pad. I'm just going to go over the area lightly, the full full front cover. You can wear gloves for this part if you'd like. Um, it just helps to stop fingerprints but again we're gonna do a little more of this book later on so i'm not too bothered about that just yet i think this really helps with putting moisture back into the book as well so if you've got a really old comic like this, like this is a Silver Age book, it will help with putting a little moisture back into the pages and helping with the suppleness. So yeah, I find this method really helpful for white areas <clears throat> and other light, lighter areas and even dark areas 
at the dry cleaning. Can't really get to, so like I said, in the fibres of the book and the paper, the, the dust that's been embedded, because it, it might have been there for many years. So you can see that that's taken up quite a lot of dirt already. I'm going to do one more of these pads. And again, it's just a light misting on top. And just go in one direction from the spine to the outer edge of the book. Now, one of the main reasons that I will just go in one direction is it can cause streaks on the book. Once it's dried, and if you do press it, you will find that the book will start to ripple. I don't know if you can see that now. It's just due to the moisture, but again, we can, and we will fix that once the book dries and once you get the pressing stages. So don't worry about it if you do get some rippling. Again, you shouldn't be soaking the cover. It'll just, it's just a light mist. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there just a moment to dry. I'll probably leave that about 30 minutes to just dry off a little bit before I check the progress because the, the book will darken. So the light areas will darken due to the moisture. So we'll need to wait till that dries out so I can check the progress and then move on to the back cover. So I'll leave it there and I'll come back once it's been dried. Okay, so I've let the book dry now for about 40 minutes. Just check on the progress. You can see the, the whites now look a, look a lot whiter, a lot brighter. So I'm uh, quite happy with that. And that's all dry enough now to, to work on the back. So we will turn the book over. And we'll try and see what we can do with this. So again, the Standard size back and board still in the centre fold of the book. And we'll just put the magazine size back and board shiny side up in the back cover now. Just being careful with that top corner. Which is sadly torn. Right, so. Again, same process cotton pad with deionized water and we'll just see what kind of effect this gives. I'm just going to turn this round so it's a little easier for me to work on. Again, same process, um, just tapping the span of the book. 
outwards towards the edge of the page. It's staining here. I'm going to try and uh, try and work on this because it is raised. So I don't know if it's residue or if it's just it's like a sticky substance. But we'll try a, a different method with that later on. It's bringing up a, a lot. Of dirt. Um, again, adding the moisture actually really helps with the kind of dog ears and folds, creases along the the edges of the book too, and once you add the moisture and then do the press later on it'll really benefit from having the uh, slight ed added moisture in the in the page it's quite dry I'm going to use a different one though Um, I think it might be quite interesting to ask what you guys would like to know if you have any particular issues on, on any of your own books that I might be able to help with. It might make an interesting video. Just let me know, just, um, just leave me a message down in the comments. And if I know myself, I'll possibly make another video on that. There's a lot of dirt. You see the uh, the benefit of why I do this. Um, just to mention too, um, none of the processes that I'll, I'll be doing will um, be classed as restoration, if that's something you are worried about. We're not adding anything to the book, we've simply taken away, so we're, we're using again Deionized water, just, just pure water. Um, and later on, we will be using hydrogen peroxide, kind of food grade hydrogen peroxide is called, so it's only 3%. Um, and that evaporates into nothing. And I also treat that with deionized water so once i've used the hydrogen peroxide i will be going over it again with with the water and any anything left over from the hydrogen peroxide will it just it just evaporates with the heat if you, if you do a press on the book Still bringing up the tan and the, the dirt that's just embedded in the book over the years. So it's really obvious on the, the whites of these back covers.
you know, once you uh, once you do this, it will it brings out the just the hidden gloss and the vibrancy of a lot of the colours as well in the book, which is really beneficial. See the the rippling on this side a lot more than you could on the on the front. I did use a little more water, but it was a lot worse on the back. Okay, I think what I might do at this point is try and address these. So what I've got here is just a plastic tool. Um, I, I just got this from online when I ordered um, some replacement parts from a mobile phone a couple of years ago. So it's just a, a black stick or a spudger. And it's got a flat end. So I'm just going to use this to see if this lifts. And again, the, the paper is damp. So it can be susceptible. To ripping at this point. And I wouldn't do this on a on a coloured area of the book. Again, it's just for my own. Personal collection, so I'm gonna try and attempt to remove this. Nope, it's actually I don't know if you can hear that how rough it is. Just a stain. I do that is residue, a little bit of sticky residue from tape. And try it with a little, a little deionized water and just try and tap the area, just pat it, slightly dab it. I'm not rubbing here, I'm just pushing and then releasing. So I'm just doing this on any of the um, more stubborn areas. You don't want to rub the coloured areas if you are, you are adding more liquid at this point. You just want to dab, push and lift. Try and lift the stain out rather than rub it out. It might actually be beneficial to put um, another cotton round just under the area that you are working on. To absorb from the other side too.
So again, I think I've taken this to a point where I'm relatively happy with it at the moment. The surface dirt has mostly came off, there's, there's not much coming up now. We'll let these areas dry that I've focused on a little more and we'll come back and, and see what point we're at. Hi everyone. So it's been a couple of days since the last video or the last section of this video um, which was the, the wet clean of the front and the back cover. Now this has dried fully and the staining on the back has improved quite a bit. It's not as rough and raised anymore. We can still see that burn mark in the corner and there's some foxing down the bottom of the book. Now we're going to try to improve that today with the it's called the hop method or heat over press now you can find out the full instructions on how to do this um in a, in a great book called comic book cpr um i'll i'll link that or i'll show that towards the end of the video um it's a really great book and i recommend everyone to to purchase it and and check that out I'm not sponsored, it's just them. Um, that's where I've learned a lot of my methods. Um, and I've just tweaked them for how I personally do it. So again, if, if you are interested in anything that you've seen in this video, a lot of it was learned through the book, Comic Book CPR, and through the Facebook page, Captain Mike's. So today, um, I'll just quickly run through what we're using, and then we'll just get straight to it. Um, we have some sheets that I've just cut of um, heat resistant baking paper. We have a few strips of just standard inkjet printer paper which I've just cut to, to size for the areas that we're going to treat. Just um, I've just cut a piece of magazine board to size because we use this to, to smoothen out the sheets later on. We have a, a tacking iron or it can be known as a, a mini iron. I believe I've got it as a mini iron from Amazon. And some 3% peroxide, which is hydrogen peroxide. It's um, food grade hydrogen peroxide. And just like the same video, magazine backing board behind the, the cover that we're working on and the standard size backing board in the centre fold of the book to, to help with rigidity. So I'm first just going to move out the way some of these things while I prep the, the overlay sheets. And do these one at a time. So it's quite a small area that I'm working on, so bear with me. So first of all, I'm just going to switch on my tacking iron and get that heated up. I just have that on mid medium range heat because you don't want to be um, burning the book. So I think what we'll do is we'll work on this bottom area first with the foxing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn turn the nozzle to spray. If you want to mist, you want to lightly mist this paper, but you don't want to saturate it or get it too wet. So I'm just going to lightly mist. You overlay sheet and you do this on both sides. It's quite wet at the moment, but that's why I have a, a microfiber towel down. 
to soak up the majority of it. Unevenly covered, but you don't want it saturated. So I'm just going to pat that down and pat on both sides. Get some of the fibers off there from the towel. Okay, so once you have your sheet. You just want to lay it over the area that you want to treat. And you want to get this as, as smooth as possible. So the increase that you do have on this overlay sheet, it can cause the creases on the paper and, and that they can be permanent or really, really difficult to get out. Kind of like a printer's crease, so you, you do need to be really careful with this and get it on smooth. Okay. So, once it's on the area that you want to treat, so I'll check my iron. It's warm enough now. So you want to get the heat resistant baking paper or SRP paper and just lay that over the top of the damp overlay and then you just want to carefully go over that full area with the iron don't stay in one area, move it And the purpose of this is the combination of the hydrogen peroxide and the moisture and the heat and the pressure on the book work together to essentially lift out the dirt that's underneath. Again, this is this is called the, the spot method which is in the in the book that I mentioned. It can actually be done whilst pressing the book with a full sheet of overlay. So you, you'd spray the hydrogen peroxide on a full sheet of, of, of the paper, inkjet paper, and you'd essentially press the book with that on top of it. Um, I've not use that yes that method because my press isn't large enough and I think it would work best with some aluminium or steel sheets for the top of the book as you're pressing so I've just been treated treating um sort of the, the, the worst affected areas of any books if I do clean them and press them. Any any major stains or foxing, I'll just um, I'll just treat them in affected areas like this before doing a, a standard press. You also do not want to lift the overlay press from the book as I'm doing now. You don't want to lift it until it's dry, fully dry. Because if you do it can take up ink from the book. So you do have to be really careful with this. Again, I'm not rushing this, I'm just taking my time. And I think the sheet underneath should be sufficiently dried now. You can feel it underneath lifting. So we'll, we'll check that now and see what it's like. I'm going to remove the paper and we'll lift that. And we'll see. Just can take a few treatments to, to show the effect as well. 
so don't be surprised if you don't see little or nothing. I don't think you can see anything at the moment. See a little bit there, but not much. I'll come back to the area later. What I do want to do is test this on some of the more prominent stains. So this area here, for example. So we'll do that now. Use a small piece of, of the overlay for this. <clears throat> okay, you should probably wear gloves for this, especially if you're going to do larger areas. Dry that now, it's a bit too wet. Again, this would take some practice, um, especially if you're going to do it with a full overlay sheet and a press. So, again, I'm just going to lay this over. And I mean, you are pretty safe laying it over ink and writing as long as you do ensure that it's, it's fully dry before you remove it. And again, I'm just going over it with, you can use a card or like a piece of backing board. Just to smoothen it out. <clears throat> Getting a new piece of uh, SF and a new piece of faking paper. And again, we're just going to repeat that process on this corner. So this will be the it'll be the last part of the cleaning process of, of the, the series of, of comic cleaning. Um, part three will be pressing. So it'll be how I prepare and how I press my own box. Um, hopefully it's been beneficial to anyone who's watching. And if you do have any questions from any of the videos, just, just let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to help out if I can. I'll point you in the right direction of, of anyone that could be able to help you. It's been, a, it's been quite a lengthy process. Kind of recording. Whilst I've been doing this, it's it's something relatively new to me. So I, I apologise if the, the videos have taken the time to be released for anyone who's been waiting for the next next part. So I do I do work I work full time as well and. Um, at the moment, I only have a mobile phone to, to record on and edit, so I'm having to do this in segments, record it, edit it, upload it, and then do the, the next section. It's been a, it's been a fun experience. It's, it's something that I've, I've wanted to do for a long time. 
I really enjoy YouTube myself personally. I've learned a lot from YouTube over the years. So it's good to finally uh, take the plunge, so to speak, and, and start this channel. Um, these irons, these tacking irons or mini irons are actually really good for um, getting out spine ticks, increases in books before you press them. Or sometimes if the book doesn't need a full press, you can just smooth out those spine ticks increases. Again, I'd be happy to, to do a video on spine tick removal. If, if, if anyone's interested in seeing that, just let me know and I'll, I'll happily do that. I have a few books that need to be kind of cleaned up with spine ticks. So I'm happy to do that if you want to see that. Right, let's check this. It lightens a little bit. This bottom section's lightened as it's it's been left to sit for a while. I think what we'll do is we'll try this. I've not tried it before on on kind of burnt areas, so I think what we'll do is we'll try that now. The smaller piece is quite quite a tricky process. So let's see what happens with this area. So we're just experimenting together now. Tricky area because it's right in the corner of the book as well. If you do um, decide to try this on any of your own books, just be aware that it's, it, it can take a few applications sometimes. Um, always use deionized water with the same, so the same process, but rather than use the hydrogen peroxide, use deionized water between applications. Um, that just stops the paper from becoming brittle um, if you do end up doing a few treatments of the book. Because even though the hydrogen peroxide does evaporate, as you can imagine with anything, um, too much can affect it. 
the integrity of the paper, the fibers in the paper. It's too dry, quite not quicker than the other ones. Let's have a look. And it's still a little area there that's not fully dried yet. I don't know if you can see the the tied line there. You can see at the top from the white to the brown. But yeah, that's gonna it's gonna take a few treatments, I think. Um if I was to keep working on the book, it would take a couple of treatments. It's lightened slightly up there. Same with here. It's it's lightened the area. And it's lightened the the foxing down the bottom. I think what we'll do is we'll do one more here and then we will just leave it until the press. So yeah, we'll do this area here. So um, I'm actually just waiting on a CGC submission return. I think once it comes back, I'll be doing um, an unboxing. There's only two books, but I'm, I'm really excited to get them back. It's the, I won't tell you what books they are. I'll just show them in the video, but it's the, it was the first books that I cleaned and pressed myself and then submit it in to CGC. So I'm quite excited and scared to see how they come back. I'd like to take this time just to again thank everyone for the support so far and thanks for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. If you have enjoyed the series so far, please feel free to leave a like. Um, it helps the algorithm for YouTube, so I've been told. Um, and subscribe if you, if you do like my content so far.
Again, it's taken up a little little discoloration. Again, I think a lot of this staining was from previous tape potentially. So it is smoother than what it was. It's lightened slightly. But I don't think I'd be like I thought without um a few more treatments of this. And the foxing's lightened at the bottom. So I think I could, if I wanted to, I could get that out. But again, this is more of um instructional at this point. So I knew it was a book that um needs a lot of work. But it's just something from my own collection, so I'm not gonna be submitting it or anything. Yep, next video I will be pressing. So hopefully it'll show the benefit of the, the clean that has been done once it's pressed and nice and flat. I do find that the book looks much better once it's been pressed. Okay, so that's it for this part of the video. Again, thank you for watching. Take care.